How's it going everyone? In today's video we're going to be looking at why you shouldn't let your machine sit outside. In the first part of this video we're going to be taking a look at how water can affect your lubrication and your fuel systems. Now on this rototiller that we're going to be looking at my customer ended up getting water into the bottom end which mixed in with the oil and created a foamy substance. So instead of an oily film protecting internal components he was left with this foamy water oil mixture that creates bubbles inside of your bottom end. Now these bubbles will literally suspend themselves on top of internal components such as your crankshaft, your bearings, your camshaft, etc. And over time this will cause premature failure in those components. Well guys, I've never seen this before. This guy's got water in his oil. The top end here, this is your uh, your overhead valve breather tube and this goes into your airbox. So I'm running this, uh, this engine here and uh, all of a sudden there's a bunch of uh, like liquid coming out of the uh, the air filter. I had assumed that uh, it was gas coming out of the carburetor. Maybe the float was stuck, but uh, you guys can see, check it out. Those are water droplets and this was like, this was pissing out like a hose. We're gonna have to drain the, uh, the oil, drain the gas, drain everything on this thing, get it bone dry because uh, I think he left this thing sit outside. Maybe the float was stuck so that water and gas was getting past the carburetor and it was going into the cylinder past the compression rings and down into the bottom end so now there's water and oil in the bottom end so we're gonna drain this thing out completely I'm gonna have to take the carb off drain the bowl well guys I was right he has water in his oil Look at that guys, I've never seen it this bad before. And like there's just, there's more draining out and it's it's just like watery oil. So it's a good thing that I wasn't running this thing for long. I fired it up and it ran fine up until it started pissing out all that that water from the, the overhead valve breather tube that goes to the air filter there. And I had just assumed, if we lift this back up, I don't wanna make a mess, but I'll try to get you a better shot of this. It's unbelievable guys, like look at it mixing in here. Look at it mixing in. Yeah, not good. So like I said, what happened was, uh, you know, he, he left this probably sitting outside. Like I said, water got into the, into the gas tank, right? There's no shutoff valve on it, so it went from water mixed into the gas and it went down the line into the carburetor. And then uh, because the float was stuck, that went right into the cylinder which passed the piston and uh, went into the bottom end. I've never seen it that bad, guys. Like, look at, you can see. See all that, like, okay, so the, the blacker stuff on the outside, that's oil. And then like the brown, milky stuff, that's water that's mixed in with it. Don't mind the, uh, the aluminum tape there, the tin foil. That's just a piece of garbage, but yeah, unbelievable. Anyways, we know what the, uh, the culprit was, I had just assumed that when I was sitting here and the air filter was was uh, wet and there was stuff dripping out of it, I thought, oh, that's just that's just fuel and maybe the floats stuck again, right? Because I, I had cleaned this carburetor and, uh, you know, I, I didn't think the float was stuck. Well, it wasn't gas coming out of the, the carburetor. It was water coming out of the top end. So, see, it, it ran good and it didn't sound like there was any uh, ticking or anything like, you know, in the valves. But if it had water in the top end, guys, now I'm kind of concerned for uh, for what the internals of this engine look like. But all is not lost. At least it had oil in it. So at least there was some lubrication. You know, the water would have been uh, mixing in with the oil and it would have created air bubbles and air bubbles don't lubricate anything. They, they suspend themselves on top of like the crankshaft. They suspend themselves on top of any bearings. You're not getting a film of lubricating oil on your crankshaft or you know whatever else. You're actually having a, an air bubble and there's a, a water and then the oil sits on top of the water. So you're not getting any sort of lubrication. Good thing I drained this out. I'm gonna flush it. So I'm gonna put a fresh 10W30 into this guy up here and then um, I'll probably close this off, tilt it back this way so that we, uh, we get you know any of the, the watery oil that's in the back there out and then uh, we'll probably end up flushing this maybe once or twice. But uh, yeah guys, I've never seen it that bad before. Just working on a Craftsman rototiller. Got a Briggs and Stratton Intec, five and a half horse. He's 
these things run great. So after changing the oil, flushing it, and cleaning the carb, this machine ended up running like it was supposed to. This was now ready to return to my customer with a recommendation that he not let his machine sit outside. Next up, we look at a Honda pressure washer that my good friend Floyd over at Tire Trackers uses to wash his vehicles. Now even though he stores this machine indoors, the jerry can that he filled it up with ended up sitting outside. So without knowing that there was water in his jerry can, he ended up filling up this uh, fuel tank on this Honda pressure washer and tried starting it up. Now if we look at this clip here, we can see fresh, clear premium fuel on top and rusty water down on the bottom of this mason jar. Now because Hondas uh, primarily use metal fuel tanks, I was forced to use CLR, which is calcium lime rust cleaner, uh, to clean the inside of that fuel tank because the water that uh, was inside of this fuel tank from the jerry can ended up creating rust, which uh, just completely mixed in with the fuel in the tank. And because the fuel valve and the fuel lines attach to the bottom of these fuel tanks, and that's where the water in these tanks settle, uh, when he went to start his machine, basically the only thing that was going into his engine was water. Check it out guys. This is why I don't like metal tanks on uh, small engines. You can see all that stuff in the bottom. This is premium fuel right here that was just put in today. So two different viscosities and liquid is what's doing this. So all of this is clear fuel, but if you'd want to salvage that, what you would have to do is uh, let this sit overnight and then take a tube into your mason jar here right about to there and start pulling in clear fuel and then uh, try not to suck up any of the, the nasty stuff down below. But you guys can see there's all sorts of stuff floating in there and, and that's off of a 11 horsepower uh, Honda pressure washer here and uh, they got these steel tanks and sure enough those steel tanks rust on the bottom and you get all that stuff down your line so I'm gonna have to rip all this apart take the tank off and clean it out now the carb bowl looked like this so that needed to be cleaned as well as the fuel tank like I said using CLR and then I installed an inline fuel filter just to pick up any bits of debris that I might have missed once all that was done we fired this thing up and it ran like new and it was ready to be returned back to the customer Oh, she runs good guys. I had to uh, clean the tank out with some CLR and then we flushed it, we put it back on and uh, I had to get a little fuel filter in there because there's still some uh, gunk in the tank uh, just because it's been so rusted. So basically that's a cheap fix. Uh, you get a little uh, inline fuel filter there and then what you can do is uh, you just keep an eye on that and as soon as that starts to get dirty, you just uh, pull those uh, while you run it until your tank's dry then you uh, just open up those clips, take out your uh, fuel filter, replace that, and then you don't have to worry about your uh, your tank rusting and, and whatnot. Every machine that's got a, a metal tank like this one should have an inline fuel filter. And uh, yeah guys, this thing's ready to go back to the customer. Next up, we look at how mice can build nests inside of uh, engine shrouds on riding lawnmowers and destroy critical electrical components. So if we take a look here, you guys can see a little bit of grass coming up through the, the vents in the shroud on the top of this engine here. Now that's normally the first sign that mice have gotten in and underneath the engine shroud during the winter months when your machine isn't being used. So by removing the shroud, we can see just the, the sheer size of this mouse nest that was underneath this uh, engine shroud. Now look at the damage done to the high tension lead, commonly referred to as the spark plug wire. You guys can clearly see the mice have chewed right through the high tension lead and and uh, just a, a note here, um, I had to replace this, which was a $65 purchase, but you have to keep in mind, guys, if you have a riding lawnmower with a twin cylinder engine, normally you're going to have two different coil packs, which means if the mice get under that shroud and chew through both of those coils, you're going to have two $65 purchases, and that's here in Canada. So now you're spending twice the money to fix this issue. Now a simple solution to this, guys, is to remove the shroud before storing your machine in the wintertime. Flip up the hood, remove 
the shroud completely, and now you're not giving an area to shelter the mice. So they'll think twice about building a nest in your engine bay. And last but not least, guys, we can have a look at this mower deck. Now, this deck has been left to sit with grass clippings on top of it, most likely for uh, a period of one or two years that this machine sat. And you guys can see that uh, the deck is just completely gone due to rot. The grass and dirt and basic uh, lawn trimmings, if let to sit, guys, will hold and retain the moisture on top of that deck. Now, if let to sit, this will completely rot your deck out and you'll need to replace the entire deck. So for this particular job, we ended up uh, finding a replacement deck for our customer and we were able to swap out a couple spindles and a couple different pulleys and uh, we're able to replace this deck for a cost of $200 which included the labor. So again just to wrap things up guys you don't want to leave your machines sitting outside. This will prevent rainwater from getting into uh, your fuel tank or your bottom end or uh, anywhere else that you don't want water to get into. And as I said previously if you're storing your riding mowers uh, in a shed uh, maybe in a wooded area uh, try removing the shroud, lifting the hood and uh, removing anything that would give shelter to these mice. And uh, as I said guys they'll think twice about building a nest inside of your machine. And by doing this simple little trick, you could save yourself uh, quite a bit of money on uh, expensive electrical repairs. And lastly, guys, uh, just to protect your uh, mower decks against rot, you're never really going to protect your deck against uh, basic surface rust. That's just going to happen over time uh, because, you know, metal uh, rusts as paint chips away. But uh, to prevent uh, the rot, like you've seen in this video here and on these pictures, uh, basically, guys, you want to let your machines cool down after using them and then take the hose and blast away any bits of uh, yard trimmings or grass or dirt uh, that you see on top of your mower deck. Well, that's it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed the video, think about leaving us a thumbs up. You can click here to subscribe and you can click over here to uh, watch one of my previous videos. I upload new videos every week. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.